Can everyone see my screen? Okay, great. So today's uh, lecture is going to be on transforming functions. All that means is moving it around and changing its shape. Um, some announcements. Let's go find Mr. Beltran's announcement. Okay, I hope you saw this in your email. If not, then you can read some of it here. Um, the important parts for you is that formal online teaching officially begins April 13th. So that's next Monday. Everything right now is still optional uh, according to the district and our principal. If you know anyone that needs a laptop, they can pick it up tomorrow from 9 to 12 at Lowell. I was volunteering to give out laptops um, this week or last week. Um, I, I believe it's the same group of people. It's SFUSD Department of Technology. So let them know. Uh, AP exams don't concern you. So um, that's because you're all freshmen, unless you all are taking some AP. Um, they're at home now, and they're much, or these are the dates. It's mainly for juniors and seniors and some sophomores. Uh, this doesn't really concern us either. Um, all the proms and other special uh, events have been canceled. But here's something interesting, and I'm not sure what the update is along here. Okay, and I'll read it. A schedule for classes will start next Monday, April 13th. Uh, attendance procedures and information regarding the retrieval of student possessions from lockers. Um, so that's a little weird. Um, April 13th, um, I think there might be a neutral schedule released and uh, teachers are supposed to have class during this time or something like that. Um, that was news to me um, in case any teachers had overlapping class slots for whatever reason. Um, I think the principal wanted to try and avoid that. And if you have things left in your lockers, looks like more information is going to come along there. And maybe this is the thing you're most concerned about, um, grades this semester, whether or not they're going to be pass-fail. Um, still no word on that. Seems like everyone in my class is failing. I said that wrong. They're passing, right? Um, everyone should be passing with like a D and higher. So I have no idea how that's going to be converted into pass and fail. Does D count as passing or not? Uh, I await further guidance. Uh, any questions related to this email from the principal? There's only three of you, so speak up. Nope. All right. Next thing in terms of announcements, be sure you're checking this post on Piazza. This is like the main thing, weekly online meetings. Here's my Zoom information. I've added in the passwords now. Over here, the link should stay the same. And every day after my lesson, I will be updating it. So keep checking for these materials. You'll notice I have uh, the first sessions uh, re recorded on here. It's a little messed up because my screen was a little weird and part of it got cut off. Here you'll see a link to the today's PowerPoint, which I've also linked in the chat if you want to look ahead to what I'm talking about. And they're all the old stuff too. And in Piazza, the, they have this weird um, internal linking within Piazza. This just refers to its previous um, certain posts. So be sure you're checking this every day. If not, like checking your email for those reminders. I don't always check send email reminders immediately. If you need help with anything, you can also post on Piazza, like this student did. He wanted a copy of the Geo textbook, so I gave him what I could find. Okay. Last announcement is there's another COVID review released. So if you open this up, here's the printed copy of your COVID review. It should be mostly multiple choice. Um, this one should be a little bit harder for those that tried it. Um, their ideas people got wrong from last semester's uh, final. So I wanted you to practice that. Uh, you'll notice in the COVID review this time, there is a quizzes link. Um, I'm exploring whether or not I'm going to use this tool to give you take home tests. Okay. 
maybe. Uh, maybe I selected the wrong answer. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I haven't checked over my key just yet, so good question. A uh, student asked if the graphing problems all had an answer, and it may be that I didn't select an answer, which is why you got them all wrong. So I have to go back and check that. Okay, so if you go on quizzes, it's kind of like a Kahoot. So I made an account earlier. Um, try to use your actual name so that I can look and see how you gave credit for. So if you click this one and this one and this one, and then submit, since this is a select all question, okay, you see that one of them wasn't selected, and it gives you the answer. So for this one, it should be uh, y plus four. Well, well, that's right, it's right. It has the right things. Going to vote. And this is the ideas we're going to practice today. You see how it's moved? Um, the absolute value um, usually looks like a V in the middle, but when you move it around, darn it. Move it down. And transforming, okay, think about move it to the last. Okay, and so uh, another Kahoot, and I can see how you do, how long you spend on a question, so on and so forth. This is maybe a reason why, or maybe a platform I'll use for giving out a um, take-home test, like for chapter eight, chapter nine, whatever's happening. It's an easy way for me to collect results. So do it on here if you can. There are unlimited retakes, because this is just practice. Um, in the future, there may be like three retakes or something like that, three attempts, and I'll take your highest score out of three to make take home tests like somewhat fair. All right, so try those out. Get any questions around logistics, any of, any of the things I just mentioned. Looks like the graph problems in the COVID review nine are correct, but I have to still double check it after today's lecture. Nope. Okay. So, okay, then I need to double check that this doesn't get cut off this time around. Okay, it looks like it didn't get cut off, great. So this session two video is gonna be better. So as this week is still optional, um, I'm covering a chapter I don't never got to uh, during the school year with Algebra One, so it's new for me as a teacher, but these ideas are pretty neat. Um, in chapter 11, you see things related to, where is my pointer, oops, pointer, where are you, oh, okay, you see things related to transforming functions, that's today's topic, how do we move functions around, how do we change their position and change their shape, uh, tomorrow, maybe we'll talk about inverses, that's a neat idea you'll see again in Algebra 2, and then on to pre-calculus and definitely in calculus, and then down here, it gives you uh, more statistics, um, simpler ideas, unlike the coding chapter we did earlier this year um, around, uh, so if you remember mean, median, and mode, IQRs, uh, standard deviation, that kind of thing, that's what this next, uh, the third idea from chapter 11 is about, and it gives you a preview of what statistics is like um, if you're interested in taking AP stats uh, during your time here at Lowell after Algebra 2, then uh, be ready. And so transforming a function, here are the things that you'll be going over, oops, right? After like some practice, you'll be able to answer questions like this. Describe the new graph, how do they move? Notice it uses function notation a lot. Um, so I'll be reviewing a lot of that. All right, starting with something we are very familiar with. Uh, here is a linear function. My examples today all deal with lines. Uh, the simplest case possible, and if there's time, we'll go over um, the more complicated functions like exponential, uh, quadratic, square root, or absolute value, okay? And in a linear function, you remember the general equation looks like y equals mx plus b. You have b standing for the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. We also call that a starting value or initial value. We then have its m is the slope, and the slope uh, has many names. Often we call it a growth rate, um, a bunch of other things, rate of change, 
uh, changing y over changing x. Okay, that's m. Uh, y, uh, we often refer to, oops, my pointer go? Is my pointer still there? So now I have to approve everyone in Zoom, so that's the annoying part. Let's see, full screen. Okay, so we're back. Um, y is our dependent variable. Um, y and f of x are often used the same. Uh, they have similar meanings. We're going to try to use f of x more uh, while talking about uh, functions and transformations. So here's a example. Can you figure out the equation of this line based on the information I gave you? Be mindful of the scaling. If you're watching this, you can pause and think about it. For those joining me now, you can see that the y-intercept is at positive 1. And then you can see at slope, it goes over 1. Okay, one, Five of these boxes count as one unit. There's a 1 here, there's a 1 here. And then down 2. So that's a slope of negative 2. 2 down, 2 over 1. So that's the equation we're going to work with in our first couple examples. f of x equals negative 2x plus 1. Here's the main question, uh, highlighting the new idea of transformations. What happens when you add 1 to this function? So algebraically, it looks like this. Okay, notice here there's the plus 1. We can simplify these two ones and to give ourselves a 2. And over here, you may notice a new symbol. Okay, there's function notation, the f. Now you notice there's a dash here. That's red f prime, f dash of x. Okay, f prime of x means this function has been changed a little bit. It's related to our original function f up here. It still has an input of x, but it's a little different, and that's why it has this little dash here. Okay, f prime. f prime is now equal to negative 2x plus 2. What does that look like on our graph? How did it move? Okay, transformations, you can think about them in this first step as did the function move up, down, left, or right? For those participating today, uh, could you type in the chat real quick? And for those at home, you can pause, think about it. You know what the equation is. Did it move up, down, left, or right? Great. In this example, it did in fact move up. Good. Okay, it moved up one unit. Every single y value uh, was added uh, by 1. So what was once 1 now became 2. What was once 0 for the y, it became 1. Over here, you need it to get to 0. So its old value was negative 1. Good job. Okay, so over here, there's our algebra up on the right. And so why is that? Here's another way to go about showing it. Okay, you're adding one, uh, maintaining the same equality on both sides. You can see that over here, f of x plus one, it's staring you in the face. Okay, y plus one means you're going up. If that wasn't clear enough, go back to y. Instead of f of x, you can see that it grew up by one. Okay, so that's adding. And you can imagine, how would you get um, this equation, negative uh, 2x plus 1, or this f of x, how would you get it to go down by one unit? To be like over here, where my cursor is going. What would that equation look like? Any guesses? It's uh, simple enough to type. Cool. Yes, very good. Very good. It would look something like try to find this thing, right? y equals negative 2x, okay? Plus 1, and then our going downwards was a minus 1. Together it makes 0, so the students that participated, it does in fact uh, y equals negative 2x. That would be that equation. That's how you move down. And the new idea that I'll show you in the later slides are 
Using function notation, it looks like this. You have your original function, whatever it is. In this case, it's just a line, but it could be something more complicated. And we take away one. Okay, that's the function notation for going down. Okay, uh, next one. Oh, I'm like stuck between. Okay, when we go here, Notice, still the same idea, still the same function, but now we're adding one in a different way. Notice in this example, we have uh, the adding one right next to the x. So same question like before. When I modify my function this way, when I transform my function in this manner, does it move up, down, left, or right? We already talked about two of them. There's a 50-50 chance. Which one do you think? Left or right? You're thinking, you're thinking. Cool. Let's say it goes right. Um, with that idea, I imagine your line of thinking is like, okay, if y plus 1 was up and y minus 1 was down, then x plus 1 should be right. And x minus 1 should be left. All right, let's see what the uh, how it moves. Turns out the idea is a little opposite. The function actually moves one unit left. And we'll go through some steps explaining why that is. And seeing it is the little bit harder part. It's kind of like how uh, when you're solving for x-intercepts in a parabola, how it's like it has an opposite idea with the zero product property. It's similar because there's that oppositeness. Huh. Okay. Uh, one second. I think someone may have joined. No. Okay. Never mind. So. Okay, why did it move uh, one unit to the left? Uh, student guessed, well, I thought it would move to the right. So let's go through the steps. Here's algebraically what it could look like. Notice the change. The plus one is now next to the x. You're modifying the inputs. Everything's moving over one. This is just some more function notation. We distribute each of these. So if you're watching my pointer, negative two times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2, and then our 1's left on over here, and then we simplify it some more, we get this final equation. y equals, or f of x plus 1, that's our transformation, or our new y equals negative 2x minus 1. Your y-intercept is now down here, our slope remains the same, All right, so we know the equation, that's what it looks like, but I still don't see why it's uh, left one, okay? Here's another way to approach it. So we paused uh, where we started before, here's where we started with, and then after some algebra, we got here, okay? We added one. Here's a table. When studying these new behaviors, often we go back to the different representations of functions we've been working with uh, all year. Notice in these first two columns, we have the red line, our original function, x. There are the three inputs. Um, that's what I labeled with my arrows, those x values, like this point, this point, and this point. Let me go annotate a little bit. So for those watching right now on Zoom, you can see these markings. But for those uh, watching this later, you won't be able to see these markings. Okay. So those are my three points that I'm working with, and we're going to try to study these three points. Notice their x and y values, or their x and f, f of x values, are the ones listed. Here is 0, or here's 0, and it has a y value of 1. Here, this point in the middle, it has a x value of 1 half. Its y value is 0, and over here, there's positive 1. Its friend is negative 1. Okay. So now, as we look, because we already talked about um, the changes going up and down look a little different, they look more like, 
Let's see, like f of x plus 1, okay, to move up, or f of x minus 1 to move down, we know that it's either a left or right motion, but it's tricky because right now uh, it seemed kind of obvious based on this pattern that it would go right. We're trying to explain why it's actually left. So in that regards, on a graph, if we want to just see how much it moves left and right, that means um, the y-coordinate is the same. So that's why in this column, notice this is our new function, okay, f of x plus 1. After our transformations occurred, I've added that 1 here. These are its y values. They are the same as your old y values, 1, 0, and negative 1 for these given inputs. So far, so good? Yeah? We're trying to explain why it's going left instead of right. Okay. So with this part, kind of previews some of the ideas in tomorrow's lesson. We want to find the inverse. We want to undo this function. Okay, and uh, now I can like write it out. So imagine, okay, we know f of x equals 1. So over here, that value is 1. And now we want to solve for all this stuff that's left. We want to get x plus 1 together by itself. Okay, so our first step here would be to take away 1 from both sides. Okay, so that goes away. That goes away. We're left with 0 equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1. And how do we do a multiplication of negative 2? We divide by negative 2, and we divide 0 by negative 2, and we see that x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so in Zoom, I'm writing out those steps for those that have joined me. Otherwise, I'm just narrating and verbally telling you those steps. And you can see where I got this 0 from. Yeah? It's like solving. We're approaching it like undoing to get x um, of x plus 1 by itself. And when we go over the inverse tomorrow, um, this will make it like a bit more sense. So we repeat that process of undoing, and we get these other y values. And we have one last step of undoing. Okay, Once we know those values, and this is like a little bit easier, we will undo from here, oops. So when we're at x plus 1, how do we get back to x? Well, we got to undo that adding of 1. So from each of these x values, we're, we're going to take away 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. And then from that same exact table, now bolded in red, do you see that going left in the x-coordinates now? You started at 0, you ended up at negative 1. You started at negative 1 half, you ended up at, or positive 1 half, you ended up at negative 1 half. You started at 1, you ended at 0. Okay. So although this thing, okay, like, we're trying to explain why adding 1 when it's right next to x goes uh, left when we think it goes right. And you can imagine when we do, um, like, pretend like it was minus 1 here, that I would actually move it left. Like that. Okay? Questions, comments? All right, so here's some practice. I have on the right five equations, green, purple, black, blue, and your original function, that's the red one, okay? Notice we have f of x here. And our function is a similar line. Now it's the equation y equals x minus four. That's your original f of x. 
can you now match these four transformations with these four lines? And I've bolded some points of interest for you. So for those at home, you would pause the video now to work through it. For those that are here, can you give some matches? They're simple enough to type out on the screen or in the chat. What's f of x plus 1? Is that moving up, down, left, or right? Which color is it? Red is your original. That's your starting one. Any takers? Any guesses? Is it purple? Cool. Very good. A 2004 Honda Civic in a sock. This one is in fact purple. Good job. And you can see, okay, so I'm annotating in Zoom right now, that from your original, this it did in fact go up one. You were at negative four for just the y-intercept in the red line, and it moved up to purple, which has a y-intercept of negative three. So keep going. What's f of x minus 1? Black. Yeah. By similar reasoning, when you take away 1, you're making it more negative. Thus, you are at negative 4 for your y-intercept for the red, and now you're down to negative 5 for the y-intercept. So this one's the black one. And that leaves green and blue. So if you notice, we would read um, this one. So that's the second from the bottom in the list, f of the quantity x plus 1. Because you notice both of these, they kind of read the same. So you would say the quantity of to emphasize these parentheses. So is that green or blue? Green. Good job. This is the one that moves it left, therefore it is the green one. And by process of elimination, that the only one left is the blue one. Let's see how we did. Purple, black, green, blue. Sweet. Good job. Go team. So. That's a quick exercise going over linear transformations. We've learned moving up, down, left, and right. And so far, it's just adding or a subtracting operation we're performing. Okay, that's the newer stuff, okay? The older stuff, we've actually done it before. When you multiply a certain, oops, when you multiply that same function by two, Okay, and there's two ways we can multiply it. This is like everything being multiplied down here. You get this equation, 2x, or negative 4x plus 2. Okay, so, I need to keep. So, when you are multiplying everything by 2, all of that, um, you know in terms of like getting steeper, okay? And there's a neat little animation it grows faster, it, like if you're driving, the speed increases, okay? And now we're trying to pay attention to the parts that have changed or didn't change. Notice in this example, when you multiply it this way, which looks like in function notation, two times f of x, okay? Like that. It makes everything steeper. There's no change in the x-intercept. That point changes the same. Stays the same. The y-intercept did in fact change. And the next one, you'll notice. Okay, another change of x. Now with multiplication, and in function notation, it looks like f. And notice the two nows inside the parentheses like that. A transformation looks like this also makes it go steeper. But now it like pivots around your y-intercept, or like it, you know, the it rotates around your y-intercept. 
And now it's the x-intercept that changes, but the y-intercept stays the same. And again, it gets steeper. Yeah, we studied slope a lot in the first semester, but now we're approaching it from a transformation perspective. How did this function move and or um, change? So far so good? And so we have a bunch more. Like my examples that I talked about today were just with lines. This one is, uh, what is it? Could be uh, moving up and down. This one is some kind of steeper related to the growth rate. This one is two. And then this one is moving um, left and right, okay? Now we can explore this kind of transformation idea with a more complicated function. You notice here I have a quadratic, I have an exponential, another quadratic, another exponential. Down here we have another quadratic. We can even perform this, like in your COVID review, on absolute value functions. And then later we can also study square root functions. We've seen graphs of those. And your classwork for you to go back to, and then I'll pick up here tomorrow, is to think about, okay, if I perform these transformations, how does each function change? How does it move? How does it stretch? Uh, we'll do one of these um, together. My first session, we went over a quadratic. No, we went over an exponential. So in this case, we'll do a quadratic. And if you feel like you really know what's going on, in the subsequent slides, I have um, short little practice problems related to what I just talked about. Okay, so as I minimize my screen, I'm now going to go to Desmos, okay? And I'm going to study this first one over here, x squared minus 6. So if I were exploring these, so I'm pretending I'm like one of you right now, oops, y equals, oh, you still see my screen, yeah? You see Desmos in front of you? Okay, great. So there's my original. There's my red function, okay? And your goal is to think about, okay, when I kind of give it some random stuff so it doesn't show immediately, okay? Let's say I wanted to move it like this, right? Oops. Minus six, and then I added plus one. You're like wondering, okay, is that in the left or right? I want to try to make this function move, in this case, which one? Right or left, up or down? Okay, try to play this guessing game with yourself first before you go and modify it, and then add in like a Y, and then you'll see it. Oops, get rid of that. Okay, zoom in a little bit. You'll see that, ah, okay, just like from before, my F of X, let me write a little bit, my F of X, in this case, even though it's a quadratic, my F of X plus, oops, plus one did in fact move it up. And so if I do something similar over here, right, f of x equals x squared minus 6 minus 1, that moved it down. Yeah. Let's see what happens when I change it like so. Now it's x plus 1 squared minus 6. That moved my function to the left. I can turn these off in Desmos to get them out of the way. Okay, you see that I moved left. And then you can go one more, confirm. Okay, the same pattern applies for parabolas. Oops, minus one squared, watch the parentheses, minus six. And you can see the black parabola is the one that moved right with a minus right here. Now here's the weird part, okay? Um, with these, adding and subtracting, it is similar to lines, right? It works exactly the same, up, down, left, right. But now you'll notice when you experiment, let me clear my screen, with the ones, the, the transformations that look like this, F, oh, I should put it not over there. Okay, on the screen, F of two X or two times f of x, that those behave a little bit differently. And let's see what happens. Okay. So 
go. Here's my original uh, x squared minus 6. Let's do 2 times all of that. Notice this weird thing happens. Let's change this one to orange. Okay. As you multiply it, the everything by 2, it goes down here, right? It gets more narrow. From before, it should be, or at least this part might be the same as lines. You notice the x-intercepts stayed the same, but now it got more narrow. What do I mean by narrow? Over here, the red line is the original. It's wider than it is compared to the orange. And we can go back over here. Maybe we'll do another orange one. Y equals 2. It's going to be inside there now to the uh, 2x uh, squared minus 6. I notice with this one, erase, erase, it's similar to lines. It's y intercepts stayed the same, but now it's x intercepts. Uh, got changed. It still got even steeper. Notice the blue in this case, right? It's between the original. Okay, the steepness idea still occurs with parabolas. Now it's kind of hinting at that a value from before. Okay, I, I chose a particular um, function here. You can go back and work on these other ones as classwork if you want to um, explore what happens with more complicated um, functions. Go ahead, try to predict their behaviors, and then you can also go back and like answer these practice problems, right? Most of them are multiple choice where they have different parts. So how does this fit into like the parabola stuff we've been talking about for chapter 8? Well, vertex form is just a transformation of a quadratic function. You move it up, down, left, and right a certain ways. Um, factored form is something similar uh, in regards to like standard form. So you can build other parabolas by applying these things step by step. And in tomorrow's lesson, when we talk about inverses, we think about applying those steps and also we will uh, apply them backwards to get back our original one. And you'll see these in Algebra 2 when you're studying even more complicated functions in pre-calculus and definitely in calculus. These are really big math ideas. So that's all for today's lecture. Um, take care. You have extra practice posted. If you need more help, send me an email. We can work um, together on separate times. Just let me know a time that works for you.